Let's briefly talk about mana. Mana is a question. It starts with what? How? It is a good question. There is an ultimate problem that we all face. How can we be saved? The manna is the bread of God. Remember, it is bread that God has given, and bread in the Hebrew ties with battle. In other words, it's the battle of God. Thus, when we talk about manna, we are actually talking about the battle of God. There is prophecy in the manna. What are we talking about? We're talking about the lechem. We're talking about the battle of God. What? How? The descriptions of the manna describes how the battle of God would be working. How can we be saved? The manna is the bread of God. It is the battle of God. And the people cried out, what, how? Because they couldn't understand what they were seeing. And in the spiritual sense, one couldn't understand how can this be possible because there is a death verdict. We're all doomed. How can that be not there because it's there and God can't lie and now that's Satan's trap for us all. He wants us doomed. But thank God for the battle. How? Right is prophesied in the manna. If you go to the descriptions of the manna, the descriptions thereof is it was like the seed of coriander. So the battle of God was like the seed of coriander. In Hebrew, the word seed ties with child. Coriander has a tie with cutting. In other words, the battle of God was like the child of cutting. The anointed would be cut off, not for himself. He was anointed for his burial, he said. His anointing is to die, to be cut. In other words, he is the fulfillment of the child of death, the child of cutting. The battle of God, the lachim of God, the bread of God, is like the coriander seed, is like the cut child. It's like Jesus who has died. That's the battle of God. That's that. What? How can God save us? And the taste, now if you taste something, in other words, it's something that you come to perceive, you come to understand, you can make out what it is, your perception and your understanding. So the perception and the understanding of the manna, the what and the how, the perception and the understanding of the child that was cut, of Jesus who has died, the perception thereof would be like honey and like wafers. Wafers is flat, so it ties with flattening. And honey is sticky, it's gummy. So there is a cleaving and a flattening. Jesus went lateral, he was flattened, he died. He was cleaving to death. The perception would be of the cut child, it would be cleaving, the going lateral, the death testimony. And that is the matter, the business that was set in order by God. And the word that's used there to reference the name of God ties with his holy name. In other words, God that is, and the first time we encounter that name in Genesis 2, we read that he is the one who has breathed out his breath to give life and is. It's fulfilled in Jesus who did breathe out his breath. And because he is the one that has life, he rose. Thus, it was set in order by the breather out of his breath, having the ability to rise. And thereby, God overcome the question of how he can save us. And the battle of God is being won. And that was what had to go in the Ark. So it's the Ark of the Covenant and the Ark of the Testimony. What testimony? The Ark ties with the gathering coffin, all right? The gathering coffin of the covenant ties with cutting. The gathering coffin of cutting. The gathering coffin of death. Testimony of Jesus. It's the Ark of the Covenant's testimony. The gathering of Jesus unto death. Testimony. And there in his place, the what, how? Manna is like the seed of coriander. The manna, the what and the how, is like the child that was cut. Like Jesus who has died. And that entered the coffin of death, the ark's testimony. And the ark has a lid of mercy. Jesus put a lid on the death gathering coffin. And thus is extended to us mercy. We are following the prophetic fulfillment of the ark of the covenant sign. By following Jesus. It's the testimony of Jesus that parts the waters, the wasting, and provides a way to the other side. And it is under the command of Joshua, of God's salvation, that it is done. Follow the fulfillment of the ark. 
Remember, we do not pray or worship any created things, but we can hear the testimony and follow that in the fulfillment thereof, which is Jesus. Thank you.